Hello, uh, welcome to a video on the purification of an organic liquid. Uh, now this is suitable for students studying for A-level chemistry and in this particular video we look specifically at a question on how to purify an organic liquid. Uh, so it should probably be watched after having watched the video which is more sort of theoretical based uh, which is also on this YouTube site. And here we're just going to look at this question. So it probably is worth pausing the video now so you can read the question. Um, but here we've got, um, or we're told we've got a sample of propanol and we're oxidising it using potassium dichromate dissolved in sulfuric acid. And there are two questions asking about the practical technique down here. The first one is asking you why we reflux. And I'm slightly confused at this point because my pointer is not working particularly well. It's about an inch away from where the pen is on the screen, but we'll carry on. And the second question is on how you would purify the mixture at the end. You might, if you were seeing this question in the exam, expect other questions based on this. Uh, things that I can think of off the top of my head might include uh, drawing the structures of some of the um, reactants and the product. So the product here is obviously propanone, the ketone. Uh, they might ask you to write a balanced equation uh, for the, the oxidation of propan-2-ol into propanone. Or they might even ask you to write a half equation to show how potassium dichromate acts as an oxidation. So as you're revising, um, these are all the kind of things you should be thinking of, um, which and sort of second guessing what the examiner is going to ask you. I'm not going to go into that now. I'm going to go into these two points here. You also have some data which you might need to use, and they're on densities. And it does say you may need to refer to the data below. If you're given data, you're definitely going to need to refer to it. Right, let's get on with it. OK, so the first half of the question is asking us to describe what is meant by the term reflux and is asking to explain why it is used. And I thought it would be helpful here if I actually included a diagram of a reflux setup. And don't be surprised if you're expected to actually have to draw something like that in the exam. Down here we'd have heat, and there's something really wrong with the pen that I'm using uh, on this screen. Uh, you need to make sure that you label the water going in and the water coming out of the condenser. And you also need to make sure that you don't put anything in the, the top of the condenser. The system needs to be open. And then if we're going to describe um, what is meant by the term reflux, I would talk about the condenser being in the neck of the flask. condenser in the neck of the flask. Now, I really apologise for the writing. Um, it's an absolute shocker. Um, so I might change... Um, I might change pens. Uh, so the condenser is placed in the neck of the flask and the mixture is heated to boiling. For a long time. Or, yeah, for a prolonged time. So it's not just done for five minutes, it might be done for 30 minutes. All right. Now, why do we put the condenser in the top, in the neck of the flask? Um, because any vapours which escape from the liquid They condense and are returned to the flask. Okay, now this means um, no reactants or products are lost from the 
um, the system. Um, so this forces the reaction to completion. So I think that's worth a worth the third point is that no reactant or product is lost. Uh, so uh, reaction forced to completion and yield maximized. And I'm going to pause that and try and fix the screen and see if I can do anything. So those are the three points uh, that I was going for. Um, the condenser is placed in the neck of the flask and the mixture is heated for a prolonged period of time. Uh, any vapours which evaporate and escape from the liquid are condensed and are returned to the flask. And this means that no reactant or product is lost through evaporation, so the reaction is forced to completion and you get a maximum yield. Now, we now to describe how, after we finish the reflux, how we purify our product. Because at the moment, our product is, will be sitting in this flask here. So how do we get the product out, and then how do we make it pure? So, as I just explained, how are we going to obtain our pure product from the reaction mixture, which we're left with at the end of the reflux? So, we turn the heater off, we let the mixture cool down, and then we reassemble that apparatus and add a bit more to set up a distillation. And this is what the examiner really wants to see the diagram of. So, I could have just picked a picture off the internet uh, and annotated it for you, um, but you're expected to draw it. So, you need a sharp pencil, you need a ruler, you're going to have to label it. Now, given the problems I'm having with the pen, uh, this could be interesting, but I wanted to actually draw it for you. Um, not because I'm a great drawer, as you will see, um, but because there are certain points that I want to highlight. Um, so I'm doing my utmost to make this as neat as possible, but obviously I'm doing this without a ruler, and I've already made a slight error um, down here, uh, because what I'm drawing down here is a condenser. And it's going to be a tube which goes up here. And here's the outer jacket of the condenser. And here's the pipe at the end. And here's our collecting vessel. Um, and now I'm going to draw the still head up here, which is this sort of three-way adapter. And in the top of here, I'm a little bit crazy with that, but that's meant to be a thermometer. Now, I know I sound like a typical teacher, but you're not going to be trying to do this on an iPad screen, which isn't behaving itself. Um, so <laughs> I've done an okay job. It looks actually terrible. Um, and, and if I saw that in a test paper... Um, I'd be having words with the student. Um, but I think you get a general idea. Um, it's really important that you label everything on here because let's just say your drawing is as bad as mine. Uh, you want to make sure that the examiner can see what's going on. So this is the condenser. Um, what other things should we label? This is the flask. Um, here, that's the still head. Uh, this is obviously a thermometer. Well, it's obvious to me, but maybe not to anyone who has any kind of idea of what things really should look like. And obviously I've got heat, uh, 
down here. I've got a heat source. I've not drawn the Bunsen. Uh, it prob would probably be a good idea to draw some liquid in here um, and probably label that liquid as well. Okay, so uh, distillation mixture or product mixture or something like that. The writing's actually getting a little bit better. Um, I don't know why. Um, and other things I should point out to you on this diagram are that when you're heating your liquid in here, the vapour is going to evaporate. Uh, the thermometer bulb should be opposite the neck here. Um, because it should be telling you the temperature of the vapour which has evaporated and is about to go down the neck here. Um, there shouldn't be an opening up here. So your bung at the top, or whatever you've got at the top, should meet the size of the thermometer. There's a little gap there that my vapours could sneak through. There's a gap here that my vapours could sneak through. But we're going to pretend the lines are linked up. And so the vapour travels down here. It hits the condenser, which is nice and cold because we've got water running through it. And then the, the vapours condense and the liquid drips out here and is collected here. Now there's one thing I need to add to my diagram in terms of labelling. This is really important for the examiners, is that the water goes in here. Right, let's see if I can write that. So H2O in, H2O out, up there. It's really important that you get that the right way around. The water goes in at the bottom and it comes out at the top. Um, and that there's an angle as well. I mean, these are things that sort of, when you've been doing it for a while, you do it automatically. And if the condenser is flat, the, va the liquid, when it condenses from a vapour, just sits in the condenser. So there has to be a slope to allow the liquid to drain out. And the water has to go in at the bottom and come out at to the top because that ensures the most uh, efficient cooling of the condenser. It means that the water, if it was the other way around, would just run in and run out too rather quickly. Um, and it wouldn't give any time for it to absorb some of the heat from the hot pipe here. So it needs to be set up like that for efficient cooling. Now I'm going to pause my video here. Um, and I'm going to talk about the final couple of points in a moment.